Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura Dahl again and I hope you're all doing super well. So I have missed you guys. I've not done a video for a while and I thought I'd come back with, there's so, so much to say, so much to do. Sometimes it gets overwhelming and you don't end up doing any videos because you've got so many ideas. So what I thought I would do is just do a little catch up and share a bit what's going on and uh, what has been going on the last month or so fill you in on some exciting upcoming projects and ideas and have a general chit chat if that's okay with you guys the cats may get involved they may not crazy times so basically yeah as i mentioned there were so many things to talk about and ideas and in the beginning of this year i don't know how it's been for you guys like it's been amazing in lots of ways but it's also been a bit of a, a bit of a challenge uh, to get things done or to get things moving forwards um we're in mercury retrograde at the moment so you know these things happen but i went to um the jorvik viking festival last week yeah last week and i had this great plan that i was going to record it all i was going to share it with all you guys and video it all and you know because it was not it was a jorvik viking festival if you don't know what that is i'll explain it in just a second and also descended from Odin uh, Jorvik Takeover as well. So we had tickets for that as well. And I was going to film it all. And I was going to you know, do this whole sharing of it. However, I've never been to York before. I think I have maybe when I was about 15 for like an hour. So I don't really remember it so well. Um, and I've never been to it, uh, to the, obviously not been to the Jorvik. Uh, Viking festival and I think with the Descended from Odin festival I think that's the first time this year it was as big as it was I think maybe it was last year as well but a bit of a smaller event and it was definitely something a lot bigger this year so I basically got super carried away we got there me and my friend Esther I will share some photos I did take lots of photos I'll do a little bit of a montage of photos at the end um for me and Esther we got there and literally it was boom bang on with the itinerary we were just non-stop from the moment we got there until the moment we got home and so that was brilliant to be fair you know i would rather have that you know have the excitement but i think maybe next year so we'll go again next year hopefully i will um i'll uh, maybe plan it more we're gonna go for longer next time and now i know how things are and how the land lies will do a bit more of a video but i thought if you don't mind if you're interested i'll explain a little bit about about the jorvik viking festival and the descendants from odin uh festival as well if that's okay do you want to hear it cool i do apologize again that there's no video footage really tiny bit but nothing really to take home so if you don't know what this is all about if you're from a different country and or even from this country and you're like why would you go to york what's going on so york is a city in the north of the country and it is famous for its viking heritage if you watch things like the last kingdom you'll see that york is a central point for uh, a lot of the viking activities and the dane law and the it, you know when they the Vikings came to uh, England, they came to Lindisfarne, which is uh, near where my mum lives, it's up the north, hello Cobweb, uh, his little Viking raider here, and they settled very strongly in York, so York, known as Jorvik, is a place where there was a, a big Viking settlement, and if you look at an old map of the UK, the Dane law kind of came down from from the north of England, and down to sort of a line past the Midlands, and never quite made where we are now uh, in the southwest because I'm not, you know, I'm not going to do a history lecture because it's just not, I hadn't done enough studying about it to make it all sound amazing. But um, Wessex, the Kingdom of Wessex um, and Alfred the Great, all these things, there was a little bit of a line and it never got this far, basically, this far southwest. So there's a line across the country. But York would have been a really important place. And we went to the Jorvik viking center which was amazing i loved it i loved i've always wanted to go there I'm not, I'm not i've heard about it i wanted to go for years and haven't made it and that tells you a lot about the viking settlements in the area so there are lots of good videos online looking at things in a bit more of a historical context and they're really really fascinating and i know that what happened was that a lot of the obviously the vikings that came over from norway from denmark and sweden uh, they really settled, they liked it, especially around York, they, they settled in that area. They set up their homes and they married into the to the English kind of country and um, became, had their own villages. And then I know a few times that the uh, Britons 
uh, maybe I think it was more, definitely more than one sort of, but was it one big one where they basically went on a bit of a mission and tried to kill all of the the Danes or kill all of the the, the Viking settlers, even those the ones that had been sort of generations into the country. So it's very interesting history and really worth checking out if you like this kind of thing, Cobweb. Do we like this kind of thing? Yes, we do. We like to geek, don't we? Yep. So we did go to the uh, Jorvik Viking Centre, which I'd heard of, and. It was just really nice. You go on a little ride, if you haven't been, you go on a little ride, you sort of sit down and you get taken around the sights and smells of an old Viking village. But it's done in a way where it's actually placed on the place where they actually found the archaeological remains. So they've kind of re-envisioned what was already there and it was really nice. And I've been walking around a lot for a few days. So I was really happy to sit down on the ride and learn all about the, the history and just kind of be taken around the town. And they showed you different crafts and different ways you've made a living. And then there's a museum as well where you can see all the finds, all the archaeological finds, and talk to people and kind of get a real feel for it. I'd highly recommend if you're going to York and you're interested in this kind of thing to go to the Yorkic Yorkic, the Jorvik Viking Centre. I'd also recommend pre-booking online and getting the fast track. I was so relieved that I for once in my life thought ahead and did this. <laughs> um, because it was quite cute like it was obviously the viking festival everything it was a saturday that we went and was it a, it was a friday sorry it's a friday half term and i did think of all these things i thought i just i had a schedule in my brain we were like we had we were going to go and see high long afterwards more later so i was like we have to be on a schedule i'm never a schedule person but i was like schedule we fit it all in and we did fit it all in so i'm so glad that i did the fast track and i would recommend it if you're going um because the queue if you haven't done the fast track was pretty painful and it was a really cold day and if you do the fast track you basically just book and you can go straight in when it's a time slot that you've booked so that was a lot nicer so i would say that and also they did say as well that um the ticket lasts a year so i'm going to take my mum i can go back basically with my ticket and go around again so i'm going to take my mum and later this year and take her around so that's cool so that was one of the things we did that was on the last day so let me reverse let me rewind go back through time and to the day we arrived which was woden's day wednesday and i drove up from glastonbury quite a trek in a storm lovely and saw my friend and her baby so that was a nice trip on the way up and then got there and unfortunately because descended from odin festival started on the wednesday and i there was a band i really wanted to see but we didn't get there in time and you know when you really want to see a band but also if you don't eat you might just die it was one of those situations and we ate and i didn't die and that, that was that was good i think and so i missed nitland nightland nitland <laughs> I'll find out how it's pronounced. And I'd heard amazing things about them. And um, from people that were there that night, I heard absolutely awesome things. So obviously that was a great gig. And there's other bands playing as well, but I heard that Nitland were the creme de la creme. But I needed to eat. So I'll hopefully see them again some other time, go and see them live. And um, yeah, so we went and got some food, had a little look around the shambles. So the shambles is basically, if you like Harry Potter, it's basically Diagon Alley. I'm not really into Harry Potter, but I've heard people say it. So I have seen Harry Potter. I do know it does look like Diagon Alley, um, but I might be saying Diagon Alley wrong. But the shambles is this amazing kind of very touristy, but beautiful shambly little cobbled streets with old shops in. It's such a pretty city. It's really worth going, um, really worth visiting. And so we went for some food, went via the shambles and we found Valhalla. Yeah, it was actually not so hard. Well, actually, we did get quite lost. Valhalla, not the place where the warriors go when they die in battle, um, but the pub, the bar. I think it's quite a new bar. I think it's been there a year, two years. I don't know. I heard it was just new. But this became kind of a hub for what was going on over the weekend. And it is a very small bar. And it was cram-packed full of uh, reenactors, of Vikings, of rockers, of people who were just stumbled in for, for, the, for, that, for that time. And um i love that bar that was a big one thing of york i wanted to bring back to glastonbury with me just bring that bar back place it down there i asked your maiden the lovely viking shop near me um if they would open a similar bar we all agreed we'd never get any work done so but yeah that's the one thing i thought oh, i just love this back in glastonbury that would be fabulous but it was a really cute bar and it was lovely done out lovely done out and um i have got some photos but do check out their Facebook or Instagram and all that. You'll be able to see for yourself. 
I'd recommend a visit if you're going to York. Um, and there's shields and there was sort of lovely, the walls all decked out nicely, nice drinks and not so many seats with all kind of benches and furs and things like that. And yeah, I really liked it. Um, yeah, I would love it to be bigger because obviously when, uh, obviously when it, people were in there over the festival, it was ram packed and it was but part of the adventure, isn't it? Squeezing into a bar like that, part of the adventure. So I definitely recommend that as a visit. And so that was the first night and, um, yeah, so I stayed at an Airbnb with my friend and second day, mission to see all the things we could. So that was Thursday, Thursday. And uh, yeah, we did, we did, did, we did York. We did look, look, look around a lot of York that day. And it's beautiful. And it's, unfortunately, we've had crazy flooding here in the UK. So it's been about two months of flooding. It's just been rain, 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 rain. rain. And I think York gets it quite quickly. Even though there's lots of money been put into York for uh, flood defence. Still, there's a lot of um, flooding that actually happens. So the river had broken its banks. You couldn't walk along by the river. But it's a very busy and bustling modern city. But there's a lot of awesome history there and really interesting places. And a York Cathedral and lots of churches and like amazing architecture. So it's really lovely and without a doubt worth a visit. We went to the Barley Hall, uh, which is um, a, a hall where there was barley. <laughs> and it was based on lots of history. It goes back a long time. Different parts of it were built from the Tudor time and then before. It's a medieval hall. And uh, really interesting to see that uh, the life and the you know how things were done in the past. Anyway, I always love geeking about the history things. And also there was an exhibition on in there about magic and mystery. So I totally geeked out. There's also things that for children to do, collecting stamps. I maybe annoyed Esther a bit by getting into that a bit too much and had to collect all my stamps as well. But it was really cool stuff. It was like things like um, herbal lore and crystals and astrology. And you had to kind of find out which planets corresponded with, deep, deep, you know, with each um, herb or crystal, which was totally up my street. It was aimed at children. I took over. I almost pushed children out of the way to get to my stamp. But I got a bit excited and there was lots of uh, Norse and Viking seafaring lore and lots of bits about magic and dream interpretation which is something that I do so I was always I was fascinated by that so loads to do and loads to see and I really enjoyed uh, heartily geeking out there and we looked at some of the Viking shops around the town spent too much money actually Friday was the day I spent too much money and um, then went to the Descended from Odin Festival in the evening. No, we didn't. We did, but we went back to Valhalla first, didn't we? And yeah, there was wine. There's more wine. Then we went to the Nine Realms Bar, uh, which is um, a pop-up tent in the middle of York. And um, that was awesome. It was beautiful. So the Nine Realms Bar was this big tent structure that was put up in the middle of the pretty the central roads of, of York. And it was a good hub for everything that was going on as well. It's bigger than Valhalla, as it were, and uh, filled with lovely drinks and lovely people. I met so many nice people. That was a great thing about it as well, just meeting so many awesome people, um, people from this country, people from some lovely reenactor women from Sweden and just awesome people from people I've known from my past. And just, everyone just talked to each other and everyone was just really friendly. And that's what I really liked about it as well as a real friendly atmosphere. No matter what your background was or where you were from, um, people just started chatting to you. And for England, we're not great at that, are we, as a whole? So I really was happy with that. I really enjoyed it. Um, so we went there and then we, then we went to the Descended from Odin, Jorvik takeover. Um, and that was quite, a, well, it was about a 15, 20 minute trek out of the, where we were. But that was fine. Um, it's the Barbican, which is a lovely venue. It's quite a lovely venue. And everyone there was so friendly. Again, all the staff, people on the door searching you. Everyone was super friendly. So that was really, really nice. And there were some nice jewellery stores and um, obviously T-shirts and everything like that. So all of the nice things there. And we, uh, well, that night, uh, the music, let's say, wasn't quite my taste. Um, it's just not, it's a taste thing, isn't it? Tear, a very popular band. People like them. It's just not my cup of tea. So I watched it and I had, I'd had lots of mead and wine. I was feeling quite happy. Um, but uh, there was also other bands playing that were very good. Very good. 
just not quite my cup of tea like no nothing wrong with anyone you know just just isn't quite your bag um but people loved it lots of people there over the moon happy um lots of people did love the music i'm not saying anything about it it's just you know just not my taste but i sat and i enjoyed it and had a laugh and a great time and and just enjoyed the experience really of seeing all this music um and a lot of people do like all these bands i'm just not a big fan of screaming all the time or um or of uh, kind of that but it's fine it was fun and i enjoyed it so it was a really exhausting but fun first day and i liked the descendants from odin uh had a massive viking boat outside the barbican with their sort of symbol as a flag so that was super good as well so that was the thursday and and i probably missed out some stuff but yeah it was all full on like we were non-stop but i liked it i, I said to, to esther earlier like it took the rest of last week to go wow okay yeah processing and just all the epic stuff that we saw and definitely want to go back next year to to kind of spend more time there and chill a bit more maybe maybe relax a bit more and um go to different events so the weekend was where a lot of it was going on i had to be back on the saturday because i was uh, leading a workshop in the glastonbury occult conference talk about that later and so friday was our last day there but friday was epic and there was a lot going on on friday and the military precision of the uh, schedule was back on on friday well not that military really but um had a great coffee like there's this um near the barbican end of york and um, there's a beautiful coffee shop that's actually in the gates like in the ancient gates so that was really nice a great way to start the day and then we went and found the market that was on at the Merchant's Adventurers Hall. That was a stunning ancient building with beams and just beautiful old building. I do have some pictures, so I will put them on this video. And that was just a stunning building and it was bustling. Like it was so heaving. There's two floors of stores and I spent too much money. Yeah, I did. Mm. I'm usually quite good at not, not going crazy at things. Um, but I, uh, nah, mm, went it's fine it's all beautiful things and all magical things what i like about what i got and what was there is um it's all beautiful stuff and the stuff that i bought uh excuses excuses <laughs> i'm joking uh, the stuff that i bought is all for my own personal practice for my spiritual use for um creating ritual and magic and empowerment so i bought everything that i felt was actually what i came back with i was like yes this is awesome anyone seen my instagram or facebook feed you'll see the, the shield that came back with me as well um the lady did say to me when I bought it you know are you uh, buying this for fighting or for looking pretty and I was like uh, maybe both I obviously look like the kind of person that would buy a shield to look pretty um so maybe I'll fight with it yeah I might do. might do I do probably will I've done some sword fighting I'm doing some archery soon I might fight with it but to be fair I bought it to paint basically I bought it to paint I bought it to kind of really go for enjoying um creating a powerful totem shield but I'll share that another time because i boring side note is I've had a trapped nerve in my neck and it's been pretty evil and it's been quite horrible this last week so yeah um yeah just side note on that but uh I will paint that and share the progress with you with that shield but um rewind to the Merchants Avengers Hall so many stalls like really beautiful surroundings and down it was heaving and I'm really happy I'm really happy for the stall holders as well because everyone seemed to be doing a great trade and that's lovely to see actually so many stalls are suffering at the moment from political uncertainty and people feeling a bit up in the air and it's just so nice to see people just going for it and uh spending it and <laughs> enjoying really so yeah uh, we had a lovely time looking around the stalls and there was everything you could ever want really for kind of uh if you're into paganism, Norse culture, Viking stuff, reenactment, weaponry, jewellery, clothes, shields. It was lovely. Really enjoyed lots of jewellery and just lots, of, lots and lots of things. And um, lots of lovely people. Again, chatting to everybody. And uh, yeah, so that was great and totally recommend it. There was more stores going on, but to be fair, that first one possibly bankrupted me and uh, we didn't get to the other markets but if we'd stayed for the weekend we've looked at those as well there's lots of markets around town so and lots of events going on around town as well so you need to kind of really plot your course quite well to, to get the things you wanted to get done done and uh but after i'd kind of bought the shield and realized i couldn't take the shield into a highland gig maybe they would you know probably could actually but you know the barbican might be happy so it's a bit of running around sorting shield out 
and then we had our slot as I mentioned earlier at the Jorvik Viking Centre which was fabulous and then it was time to forget about food and just go to back to the Barbican because I was saying to Elsa we're going to the front like we are going to be at the front so and we were well done us <laughs> so anyone that knows me um or on any of my pages knows so I really love Highlung totally do I'm not the only one of course we all do um but I've been to see them maybe four times in the last two years three of those times being since November last year so <laughs> the restraining order might be in the post so um yeah totally I'm sure everyone on this who's watching this has heard of them if you haven't I've had people come up to me and said that because I post so much about it they've you know they've gone and bought this stuff and gone and gone to see them in concert and spent hundreds of pounds and stuff so I just felt like happy <laughs> happy about that but yeah so because what I love about them this could be a whole video it probably will be is just that it's not just music it's not and it's something to be experienced it's ritual in a really powerful way it's um I hope Esther doesn't mind me saying this but when she when because she had my friend Esther hadn't been to see them before and she didn't quite understand what I was on about and then she we finished and I said, turned to her and I was like you're right and she's like I understand everything and yet nothing and I was like yeah welcome welcome sister <laughs> so yeah no it's it's if you haven't heard them experience them nothing I say will really prepare you so just go and if you can see them live or um, of course listen to the music but I love them because of the ritual and because it's basically I've been pagan witchy for many years I've been involved in so many rituals and I love rituals and ceremony anyway but sometimes you know a group ritual can be amazing but it sometimes can feel a bit like watered down, like it's there to suit everybody. Well, with this, it's not a specific ritual in that sense, but they do it as a ritual and they invoke old Norse and old Germanic language, high Germanic languages and ancient texts and drumming and just everything that's just so primal. So it really wakes up something in you and it really echoes some things in you that feel totally true. And on a spiritual level, it just... I was talking to my friend earlier, we both were saying that we went to see them at the Roundhouse back in November. And there's quite a few people that I knew were there. And I was just kind of walking around like afterwards, even though I'd seen them already. We were all like this afterwards, we were all just going, like, oh, what's happened? So I had to apologise to people afterwards saying I did see you, but I wasn't really there. So um, yeah, I'm sure I'm talking to the converted. And if you haven't, then I'm happy to convert you. So we yeah, went to Highland and I was like, we're going to be at the front. So uh we waited very early uh six which is me i'm not very good at being early so we got there about six and the support bands were fabulous so cedar blot or cider blot they were great i'd not i've heard of them i heard bits of them but i hadn't heard them before and uh absolutely brilliant really enjoyed them so it's three guys and they had like just very simple stage with like seats with furs and drums and you know, kind of old instruments and they were very powerful and their vocals together were super powerful so it was such a nice way to start the evening and uh also after that is joe quail um i hope i've got her name right uh, she was a fill-in because i think scold i was really looking forward to seeing for some reason couldn't be there so um I've, i think i've seen her before because i really i was like i've seen i might have had a few drinks <clears throat> and not remember the fact I'd seen it before but I I when I saw her again it, it was just brilliant there's just everything lovely about her she was an absolutely adorable person and she's apologizing for not being the band everyone wanted but everyone was really happy she is super talented she's so talented her her work is amazing and what she does with loops and a very modern cello that's not even cello but it's a cello and the sounds she creates it's just stunning and we were all really uh happy <laughs> everyone in the crowd they loved her and everyone was really happy so she's absolutely lovely i think she's supporting bodhruna on their june tour here in england i think so i'll get to see her again later this year and then obviously high lung played and the, unfortunately like someone behind me passed out uh just before they came on but the venue dealt with it really well and very quickly everyone kind of pulled together and helped this person out on the stretcher so i hope that they're okay and as always like the gig was phenomenal the ritual was phenomenal again i've seen them four times and i say three times in quite a fairly regular you know from november twice in november twice in one week in november and the that was both presents to me those ones were the november ones they're both presents from dear friends so that's lovely um and this one was was yeah here so um without going on for like five years 
which I could do. Um, I feel like each one from the first one I went to, which was the first album, and that was a lot more masculine and the primal energy. So that was back a couple of years ago. Uh, um, yeah, or a year and a half ago, or a year and a bit ago. Anyway, whatever. Uh, and that was very primal. And we were, it was the first time we'd seen them, me and my friends, and we were just like, I'd heard, I've listened to them a lot before, but you don't know until you've, uh, until you've seen them really how it takes you back to past lives it takes you back to primal self it takes you back to something very real and very true that's clearly maybe been asleep or been forgotten or you know struggles to come out in this day-to-day -day world so it's very magical very powerful and then the last three times i've been um it was uh, on this on the new newer album futha which is much more feminine and not feminine in a, in a cutesy way feminine in a poof, poof, i won't swear but like in a full-on way powerful feminine energy and I feel like because there were such powerful rituals each one affected me in a totally different way and I kind of see them as a triad of things that happened so people saying oh you gonna see Huang again but that it's not just gonna see the music again which I would do anyway it's the experiences that you're having at these um at these things that are just quite transformative so that was really awesome so and the venue again was lovely everyone was lovely there descended from odin organized it really well everything was running on time because i think as i mentioned i think it was the first time they'd done something quite so big i think quote tell me if i'm wrong and it was all handled really well even though there's a few changes to the schedule i think it didn't matter it was all good like everyone who was there was fabulous and we totally enjoyed the music i just wish i'd seen nitland nightland <clears throat> but never mind another time another time and i'm really glad that i went so we had a great time. One thing I'll mention as well, that in the town, in the city, is the general uh, Jorvik Viking Festival. There is like stalls and, uh, you know, reenactment camps. But unfortunately, because of the storms, which were intense, super intense, a lot of them had to get taken down and a lot of them, things were postponed or moved because of the weather. So, um, yeah, it was... Uh, it was um, a shame for them. Like I got to see bits I wanted to see and I didn't have much free time anyway, but um, it was a shame for them that everything wasn't running quite smoothly, but weather is weather and it was very fierce. So, um, but yeah, there was some great things all around the town and lots of events on and loads of kids as well. So if you are going to thinking of going um, next February, lots of events for kids there and family events and fun events, walking tours around York and so forth so i totally recommend going on hopefully we'll be going back i'm planning on going back next year and see maybe um more of the actual festival events the viking festival events next time so um i hope you enjoyed my ramble where i go on about all the things i'm going about hiling a lot and uh, and lots of things um i hope you enjoyed this and um i'm sorry i didn't record anything when i was there as you can tell, I was quite, I was quite excited and just quite whoo, doing all the things, went over here, went over there, have some mead, off to a gig. And I think when I was seeing think the bands, I don't want to be in a place of, um, you know, recording. I want to just enjoy it. But I will put the photos at the end here. And um, yeah, I totally recommend all the things that I've said. So more videos coming soon and there's going to be an announcement at the end of this video. So stay tuned, like watch the end past the photos because we've got an announcement coming up and you'll want to see it. So guys, um, see you soon with loads more videos and I hope you're having a fabulous day. Lots of love.